Hey guys, welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is JC LaForge. I do tech videos basically about anything tech related. So welcome. So subscribe to get more if you want. Um, today's video though, it's going to be about Unraid. So we're going to be taking a bit of a tour of Unraid and uh, I'm going to be showing you some of the features. And if you haven't used Unraid before, it's going to be a chance for you to basically get acquainted with Unraid and see if it's a right fit for you and if it's something that you might want to use in the future. So let's get started. So before we start, but guys, uh, if you don't know what Unraid is, basically Unraid is a NAS operating system that is the mostly designed for home servers and uh, network attached uh, storage, basically NAS. And uh, it offers a somewhat of um, an interface that allows you to manage your storage and you can also run applications on it. Uh, you can virtualize uh, systems, you can do VMs and things like that. Um, also, it has a web GUI, as you guys can see over here, that makes managing it very, very easy. And all of the powerful features that it has are accessible um, within this GUI. So even if you don't know how to use the command line, you will be able to manage everything, including some Docker containers um, from the GUI. So today we're going to start with the dashboard and the dashboard is basically the command center and it offers a real time overview of the system's performance and also status, as you can see. So you can see certain things such as the system identification over here, where you can see the model, the registration, if you have the pro, the uptime, you have certain information about your system. And then you have the hardware information, such as your motherboard, your processor, and other information here. We can see the RAM usage, etc. Other things that you can see, uh, if we look on the right side here, it depends uh, where you're looking at from your screen here, but you can see the storage status. You can see all of the hard drives, how they're doing. You can see the temperature, uh, if, if the hard drive is healthy or not. And you can also see utilization there we can see the cache if the cache is healthy we can see the shares basically anything including user and share information so this is what some of the things that you can see just at a glance so i have some plugins that add even more information such as the airflow but this is more something you can add on and we will get into it further uh, in this video so this is mostly the um the dashboard uh the dashboard uh app if you might call it that and next up is the main dashboard. so this here the main tab is where you manage your storage and array so this is where you do most of your disk operations so here you can manage and configure your array you can set up your pools, including the cache pool, the download pool, uh, the, the, the cache, or anything that you want to configure. You can stop the array, start the array, do a check for party or parity. Everything you can do it from here. So you can do, uh, you can engage mover. Uh, by the way, guys, if there is any uh, type of words that I'm using that you might not be familiar with, this is mostly certain um, applications like. Uh, mover is basically an action or a scheduled task that is um, basically scheduled to move certain files from the cache to the main array or vice versa. So this is mostly uh, what the mover does, but I'm not going to be explaining everything here, but uh, this is just one of the things that you can do. So this is the tab where you have all of your information. As I said before, you have the temperature information. If some, if a disk is being used, you will be able to see here that the usage or any errors, including the file system. So this is super easy. And I think uh, you guys can see uh, that most of these drives are not the same size. And this is the magic with Unraid is that you don't actually need to have all of your drives have the same size. It only 
needs to have the party uh, the party drive as the biggest uh, drive and everything else can just follow follow be beneath that and you can create your pool uh, or your array from there so to the next tab we have the shares um the shares guys it's super easy um so basically uh here is where you create and manage new shares and modify them modify the rights and different things to that you can also change or set the permissions to each share and also uh, if you want to configure different caching permissions or caching options you can also do it here so let's do a mock uh, add share here and we'll do i'm gonna zoom in for you guys to see everything clearly here so you can create the share and you have all of the information for you to create the share as i said i'm not going to go through into the details on how to do everything this is not the video for that um, if you guys want me to do a video on anything you see here, you can uh, just put it in the comments below. And here is where you create your shares. You have users. So normally you have the root user, which is the main user uh, that comes whenever you install with your operating system, your Unrate, and root is already there and it's installed. Um, the Here you guys can see that other than changing the root password, there is nothing else going on here settings the settings is huge uh, this is where you do most of your operations uh, not everything but uh, most of the settings are all here so you can do pretty much anything you want from here you can do any types of settings uh you you, you can see here so um even some of the plugins that you might download from the app store might have their settings here so this is the main place where the settings are and it's where you manage everything, your, uh, you know, remote access, your VPN, uh, everything is managed here. Even your themes are managed here. So this is the main place where you will come to do uh, all of the disk settings and uh, network settings. As you guys can see, UPS settings, anything you name it, you will be able to modify or change the settings here. And uh, as I said, this is mostly, um, this is very feature complete to be honest uh, there is not much that i would want to add or remove it's very very feature complete this is the settings tab and the next tab is the plugins so the plugins here this is where you basically manage the plugins and you can install plugins you can check for file errors in the plugins and you can also do updates to existing plugins you can also do configuration of um plugin settings uh, as an example if i click on this one it's going to take me directly to the settings of this particular plugin so these are all the plugins that i have installed and you will see that all of them here every, every time i hover over here to the icon it's going to take me directly to the settings of this particular plugin and here if i do check for update it's going to check for all any update that is available for any of the plugins and it's going to tell me if a plugin like uh, here if it needs an update or not and i can do it from here uh mind you there are other uh, uh, plugins that you can install that will auto update your application so i don't have to do this because this has a scheduled task that's gonna do all of my plugins uh, update for me, so I don't have to do that. This is some of the things that you can do. The Docker page. Now, so here is where you have all of your Docker containers in a list, and in here, you will be able to see um, every Docker container, and you will be able to manage it from here. So this isn't, um, an exhaustive uh, list of all of my docker containers but it has most of them so this is where you will see them you will be able to click on each of the docker containers and then you will be uh you will be able to see something that looks like this where you can actually manage all of your docker containers so it's it's all of your docker containers of the applications that you will be downloading from the app store and we'll see when we whenever we get to the app store Everything gets managed here. You can add the ports, uh, the paths, the label, the devices. You'll be able to mark a Docker container as privileged or not. You will be able to do all of the things here. And then when you go back to the Docker list, 
and you'll see uh, the Docker container as um, to date or not. You can choose the network type. Uh, you can create that. You can do all of the things here uh, in the GUI without writing any code or not even using the terminal at all. Um, if we go to the VM stuff, guys, this is where you manage all your VMs. Normally, my machine isn't powerful enough to run VMs, but uh, if you were to add a VMs, you can see here that they have templates for any type of operating system that you might want to run. So you can see here that they have pretty much everything that you might need to run. And if you don't, if the, the Docker container, or excuse me, the VM uh, isn't available or the template isn't available, you can just create a custom one and fill in the information. So just as an example, let's click the Windows 10 here, and then you will see all of the things that we might be able to see. If that works, because I, I really never come, come here. So over here, you can see that you have pretty much all the features uh, that you need. Uh, there are certain things you have to do, such as like download um, an image of the virtual drivers. But I think you can download directly from here, or you can just download it and import it. So all of the things are done here. You have the form view here where you can basically manage uh, using like some type of XML file. Um, this is more advanced. Uh, and of course, as I said, my computer isn't really powerful enough for me uh, to do that. Uh, here is where I said you can create all of the VMs. You can manage the VM resources such as CPU, RAM, storage. You can configure the VM networking and also you can monitor the VM performance from the VM tab. Now, let's go to the apps. So this is my favorite place because here you have such a wealth of applications. So the applications is basically powered by community applications. And this is your gateway to expanding Unraid capabilities. So here you will be able to browse and install applications update install uh, update in, installed applications such as this here you can see that there is an action for me to update this plugin and this application so this is some of the things you can do um also they have a way to discover some of the application as uh, you guys were able to see if i click home here you will see that there's so many applications to choose from to do different things here uh, it's endless. I'm going to zoom out just for you guys here. Um, and as you can see, there are so many applications. And you can, of course, search and even click on all applications. You're going to get a list here. You can see we have 112, uh, 102 pages, and there are more than 2,000 applications. So it's very expansive. And I invite you guys to at least run uh, some kind of trial version of RunRed and just check this out. It's very interesting. So this you will be able to download anything and it's one click install if um i'm going to give you an example uh let's do um i don't know uh Ampachi. let's do this one and as you can see immediately it loads the form and everything is pre-filled in it knows where some of the config are going to go if i need to modify anything here i'm going to be able to do it but uh, this is not the purpose of this video. All right, so now let's go to tools. So tools is basically a various utilities for maintaining and optimizing your Unread server. So as you guys can see here, we have the diagnostics, hardware profile, new config. Uh, you can see some of the notifications that you have archived the processes, um, the system devices, drivers, log, language, you name it. There's so many of the things that if you need to update your OS, mostly you just need to click here. It's going to take you somewhere here, and then you will be able to update. And as you can see, I don't have any updates available. But if there were any updates, I, were, I, was, I would be able to do it uh, from here. Um, so here you can even do your uh, type of... Uh, so this is a, a new thing here to patch your Unraid server. So this is where you have some of the tools that you might need uh, to, um, to basically maintain or optimize your server. And that covers pretty much all of the main uh, 
uh, things of in Unraid. And uh, other than this, guys, I don't even know. Um, I don't know. EB notifications. Uh, here is where you see all of the notifications. You're going to get some of the notices. And uh, if something isn't going well, it's going to show up here. Sometimes you'll have a stack of notifications. Let's say your hard drive is running you know, too hot. You'll see a list here of things that are going on in your upgrade. So this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys. Some of you have not seen uh, who think that maybe running Unread might be difficult. I can promise you it's not. All you need is a computer, a bunch of hard drives, and a, of course, you need a USB stick. Uh, but if you do have a computer and all of the stuff, you're probably going to have a USB stick. So, yeah. So that's it for this video. Um, this has been an overview of Unread. Uh, guys, uh, if you're new here and this is the first time uh, coming to this channel, I implore you to subscribe and uh, tell all of your friends about this channel. And uh, let's get to like a million subscribers tomorrow. All right. See you in the next one. Like, comment, as always. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.